Hello everyone, this is Southern Bell Whisper. I hope you all are doing well this evening. It is time for our weekly top 10. Now, if you are a fan of my personal, honest videos and you just love how relatable they are, or if you just want to come and check on me and see how I'm doing, then stick around. But this is going to be a very personal, honest video, and I know I haven't done one of those in a while. So just strap in and get ready. And also, I wanted to show you guys this cup. I had to go to Walmart after work. I had to pick up a couple things, and you know, a couple things turned into ten things. You know, you know how it goes on Walmart. But I knew I wanted a new cup because I leave mine at work all the time. My good tumbler, I leave it at work all the time. So I, I knew I needed an, another one because I, I like getting up at night and having water to drink. I don't know what it is about nighttime, but I wake up about 2 a.m. and I'm thirsting. I gotta have something to drink. So I got me another tumbler. Not as extravagant as my um, easily distracted by books one, but it'll work for just being my home cup, and then my other cup can be for work. So, but I saw this cup with the tumblers. I looked up, and there it was, shining, like, oh, you know, and I knew I had to have it. I knew I had to have it. So, not only will we be getting up close and personal in this video, but we will also be drinking some hot tea from my new favorite coffee cup. Smile for two, two, two. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys, when I saw this, I knew I had to have it. I cannot be a Harry Potter fan and not have this coffee cup. It's Hedwig. And I, I haven't decided what kind of filter I want to put on this video. I'm so afraid that I'm going to perspire because I turned down my air conditioner a little bit. You guys, it's true that a couple days ago it was fake fall around here. It was cool, it was just the perfect fall weather, and then today, it got hot again. It's supposed to be hot all week long, but <clears throat> I had gotten in, in the mood for some hot tea when it was cooler, and we didn't have any around, so I waited until tonight to get some hot tea. Yes, it probably is too hot to be drinking hot tea, but I couldn't help it, you guys. I could not help it. I've got to share her with you guys. Is that not the cutest? Hedwig. My top three most heartbreaking Harry Potter deaths, for sure. I loved Hedwig. Oh, that is almost like having a dessert. You guys, when I go to Walmart, I get so tempted by their desserts. I've showed you guys their desserts, but uh, this time I was like, mm-mm, Kelly, mm-mm, 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 mm -mm. nope. Um, so instead, I bought a coffee creamer that was on sale. I put like a little cream in my hot tea. No sugar, just cream. And this one was called Blueberry Cheesecake. And you guys know I love cheesecake. And it tastes like a blueberry scone or something. It is delicious. I definitely recommend it. Uh, go to your local Walmart. It's called Blueberry Something. It's a great value brand, too. You can't beat it. But yeah, that's like eating a dessert, you guys. And that's, this cup is also why I am not wearing lipstick in this video. 
I don't, I don't want, I don't want marker, you know. And lipstick gets easily stuck on cups like this, so. But I did wear a little lip gloss for you guys, and I still have the eyeshadow on that I went to work with, so. But you guys, this is my new favorite coffee cup. Miss Hedwig. Okay, let's get to my top ten. So, <laughs> on August 22nd, so a couple days ago, it was nine months since I kicked my ex out of my parents' vacation house, and I told him not to come back. No, I told him, I said, don't even come back for Thanksgiving. But I... I didn't know. I, I didn't know that it wasn't only going to be Thanksgiving. It was going to be forever. Because as soon as my parents gave me that idea of just escaping, I jumped on it. I cried for a little bit because my heart was telling me to go, but my head was telling me to stay. You know, my head was saying, you'll feel so guilty if you just pack up and leave, you know, you feel so guilty, but my heart won, and I left, and I left with nothing but my Harry Potter bag and my suitcase, and that's it, and my Harry Potter Scrabble game, that's it, nothing, nothing else, oh, and the blankets, the blankets from my room, from the House of Horrors, I like to call it now, that trailer, you guys. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. I could tell you all the stories and you probably still wouldn't believe it. But I also know there are people out there that might have been through worse than I went through. So, I try not to be selfish and say, oh, I went through this and that and the other, because I know it could have been worse, but I needed to get the hell out of there, you guys, before I reached 400. I was, I was 360 when I left my ex, 360, and now I'm 316. It's just, oh gosh, I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, how to tell it to you guys. I was just a shell of a person, and if you look back on my past videos before I left my ex, you can, you can tell that I'm just not there. I'm not there. I'm just like a walk-in zombie, and, uh, but I'm grateful be where I'm at right now, mentally, physically, emotionally, but my top 10 <clears throat> for this week is going to be the things, the ten, top 10 things that I've learned the past nine months, and I hope that somebody that's been through abuse can listen to my video or watch my video and get some sort of strength from it because you guys I I didn't know that I had the strength within myself to leave I didn't know it took him talking to my parents the way he did for me to finally wake up. I hadn't seen my mom when she came for Thanksgiving last year to Myrtle Beach after I begged her to come. I begged her to go. And <clears throat> I hadn't seen her in two and a half years. So I had no idea how sick she had gotten. Had no idea. All I heard, the times where I could talk to her on the phone, She'd be like, I'm getting stronger, Kelly. I'm getting stronger. I, I had no idea she'd gotten so bad, you guys. 
and it was a shock to me. And then his, he dug his own grave, you guys. I told him multiple times, I'm going to leave you. And he said, go ahead, bitch, go. Because he must have thought that I wasn't strong enough, that he just pushed me down so low that I wouldn't even find the strength within myself to leave him. He thought I was stuck. I proved him wrong. So, but let's get to the list of the top 10 things that I've learned the past nine months. And you guys, I thought in my head when I was thinking, it's been nine months since I left him. That's full term to have, you know, like be pregnant. And it hurts a part of me because I, I've always wanted to be a mother. I've always thought that I would be a great mother. But I didn't want to have kids with him. And I'm sorry, but God made it to where I never had kids with him. And thank God for it, you guys. But, yeah, when I was like, it's been nine months, I was like, that's, you know, if you're pregnant, that's full term. It's nine months. You know, usually. But, um, <clears throat> I'm still 33, you know. I'm still young. And I'm not going to give up hope that one day I might, might be a mother. I'd love to be a mother one day. I really would. But, anyways, let's get to the list. Sorry for all the rambling. The things I've learned the past nine months. Put God first and everything will fall into place. Now, I know most of you are not religious, or I know I have some viewers that aren't religious, and I totally respect that, but when it comes to me personally, I know that God saved me. I told you guys about that night on the beach, how I, I don't remember, I don't remember anything. I just remember calling out for help, and he helped me, and since that night, everything changed. I started waking up more and more, it was crazy, but me personally, if I don't put God first in everything that I do, it's, it's not meant for me. have written and, and studied every day for the past two months and I can't tell you what a difference it makes in my life to study my Bible every morning as soon as I get up I study my Bible and I write in my journal and I can't tell you what a world of a difference it makes you guys it does make a huge difference, but I owe God everything, I owe my God everything, I owe Him my life, I still don't know to this day why, what made me so special that He saved me, but maybe one day I will, but I love Him, I do, I love Him with my whole heart. He, he's been by my side through everything and has never left me for one second and I'm grateful and humbled and blessed for it. Number two, love yourself enough to walk away and start over. That's my problem, you guys. I've always put other people's opinions of me and their happiness above my own. 
I thought I could love my ex enough that he would change his ways, that he wouldn't gamble, that he wouldn't do drugs, that he wouldn't watch porn, that he wouldn't call me names. But you can't do it, you guys. You have to love yourself enough to say, I am tired of this. I deserve so much better. Don't feel like you're selfish by saying, I deserve better. Please don't. I, that is one of the first things that I did when I got here was to try to start loving myself above all others, except for God, of course, and I, I'm still a work in progress, uh, yeah, I'm still a work in progress when it comes to that, but I can say that I know I look a lot healthier than I did a year ago, so. Number three. Be kind to others, and they will be kind to you. I should have told you guys at the beginning of this video, um, we are losing people like flies at Goodwill. And the other day I found out that Zeus was a no-call, no-show. And the last time I saw him, he was sick as a dog. And it really worried me, but, and then I realized he's 19. He's young, probably stupid. She, you know, my boss told me that he got mad that he couldn't have the same off days as his friends. But uh, that was, I've been working there a month and I've really created friendships with a lot of my coworkers, all my coworkers, actually. And finding out about him kind of broke my heart a little bit. You know, why is it always the good ones? But, sorry, I can say that I was always kind to him. I was never mean. If you wanted to joke around and bounce all the balls with his ADHD, then I laughed and was like, <laughs> you're crazy, you know? And then today, a, a woman and her husband came up to my register, and she said, my, my, my husband has dementia, so I have to guide him out of the store. And I said, honey, I know exactly what you're talking about. I told her, I said, I was a CNA for 12 years, and I've seen it all. And she just seemed like, she was like, I don't know what to do. She said, people are begging me to put him in a nursing home, but it's hard. Mm. My heart, you guys, even now thinking about it. But I was kind to her. I'm kind to every customer that walks through my door. You know, I may talk shit about the, the tweakers that come in on camera, but in person, I can't be mean to people, you guys. I just can't do it. I'm nothing but kind to every person that I meet. But I'm not going to lie and say that I've always been kind. That's why I said I'm a work in progress. Number four. You can choose to have someone in your life or want someone in your life, but they have to choose you too. You guys, sometimes my writing, ooh. I wrote all this by heart, you guys. <laughs> but it's true. You might have to lose people in your life that you thought would be there forever when you go through something like I'm going through. Sometimes you're going to lose those people, but that is because God is making a space for people, to, for the right people that are supposed to be in your life to go. 
like Miss Paula, my friend Paula, um, I don't, I couldn't imagine my life without her now. I've known, what, known her almost a year now. She's watched me and my mom's videos for years, and I couldn't, she is such a great friend to me, you guys. And, but I can say I've lost mutual friends that we shared, and uh, for a few months it hurt. It really did, it hurt. But now I am surrounded by the people and the friends that I know are supposed to be part of my life and that choose to be a part of my life. Five, do something for a living that you enjoy and gives you a sense of purpose. You guys, one of the things that I found out when I first moved here, that's why I was freaking out about my CNA license, was that they pay $26 an hour for CNAs around here. But in my heart, I knew I didn't want to be a CNA again. I knew it. I, I can't, I can't be a CNA anymore. My body wouldn't be able to stand it. Like, it was a rewarding experience. It was heartbreaking, the pandemic, everything. It was hard, hard. But this job I have now, it goes by so quick, you guys. I've never loved a job so much in my life where the hours just fly by and then, oh, it's time to go home. Like, I've never had that ever at a job before, which proves to me that I'm where I'm supposed to be. But I enjoy it. I enjoy staying busy. I enjoy interacting with my customers. I love my coworkers. I mean, I I think I found my purpose with where it pertains to what I want to do for a living. Because goodwill is not just goodwill, it's it stands for so much, you guys. I've learned so much that I didn't even know about goodwill. So I consider myself very lucky. Not everyone is that lucky to have a job that they actually enjoy and love going to every single day. Number six, leave the past in the past where it belongs. That's something I'm guilty of, you guys. I can, I can dredge things up from my past and be like, well, this happened to me and that happened. See, I even did it in this video. See, I'm guilty of it. But if you dally too much in the past, at some point you're going to be stuck there. And it, you're going to be in a deep, dark pit of despair. If, if you have a rocky past, just don't. Don't forget about it. The only things you should be worried about is your present and your future. Don't think about the past. The past is in the past for the for a reason. That's why it's called the past. You just, you can't live there anymore. That's not you. I look back at the person I was as, and I don't even recognize the person that I was before I moved here. Before I left my ex, I do not recognize that woman at all. So, cheers to that. Seven, forgive yourself for not being perfect. Some, sometimes I'm guilty of putting myself down and feeling guilty, even today, even nine months still feeling guilty, like my mind would be like, mm, mm, you know, trying to break through that brick wall of my consciousness by, ooh, feel guilty about this, that, and the other, but you have to forgive yourself, because you, 
You just have to. You can't go around in life and not forgive yourself for the mistakes you have made. You just can't. That's one of the biggest things about changing and growing and becoming a better person. Oh, number eight. Strive to be a better person every single day. I love that one, you guys, because we can always be better and do better every single day. We can always be a better person than we were the day before or the day before that. That's what life is, is growing as a person and realizing what really matters in life. I've realized what matters in life, mostly. <laughs> Nine, don't be afraid to love people. They aren't going to hurt you if they really love you. Oh my God, you guys. Ooh. I'm going to read that one again. Don't be afraid to love people. They aren't going to hurt you if they really love you. If someone really loves you, they won't hurt you. They will not hurt you with their actions. They will not hurt you with their words. If somebody loves you, they will fight for you. They will spoil you. I mean, we're women. We deserve to be spoiled by our husbands to have a nice hot meal when we get off of work. Our having the laundry done or coming home to a clean house. We deserve that as women. Um, I like being single personally, but um, yeah. If someone loves you, they're going to show it. They're going to show it in everything that they do for you. If they love you. I will I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Actions speak louder than words. Words is just bullshit to me, sorry. Number 10 was actually my mom's idea. I was like, I came home, I was like, I got nine, but I need a tenth one. And this, I gotta give all the credit to her. And I think it was perfect to end this top ten. And that is... <laughs> oh, I love my mama. She comes up. I'm sorry. Smiles don't cost anything. But it can be everything. Ain't that the truth, you guys? Because what, um, what if a homeless man was to come into Goodwill and everybody's just sneering at him? And, uh, 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 you know, menace to society. And I'm just standing there and I'm like, Welcome to Goodwill. How are you? Smiles don't cost anything, but it can be everything to someone, somewhere. It can make their day. It can be the ray of sunshine in the, snor in the stormy clouds of their life. It can be a ray of sunshine to somebody. Just a smile, a gracious nod. And a how are you doing today can make somebody's whole day. I'm grateful for my smile, you guys. I know my parents paid a lot of money for this smile. And I'm grateful for it. But anyways, you guys, that is my top ten for this week. I 
really hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't feel like I'm preaching to you guys, but I love you guys and I will be talking to you tomorrow for my Bible study. I hope I close tomorrow and then I think on Monday I open, so I'll have to see how I'm feeling. But you guys know me, I'm not going to go without doing my Bible study every Sunday, but Hedwig says bye-bye, good night.